Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first episode of Variety Games with Josh. This is going to be our very first episode, and I just want to introduce myself and introduce what this show is going to kind of be about because I really wanted to take my passion for video games into even more spaces beyond just Twitch and YouTube. We're expanding into Substack. We're now expanding into podcast stuff. So Spotify, Amazon Music, wherever you get your podcasts at, make sure to subscribe, make sure to like, follow, and do all the buttons and stuff because hopefully we can continue doing this for a very long time because this is one of my, like I said, one of my huge passions in life is just playing all sorts of video games. First of all, my name is Josh. I've been playing games since I was very little. Uh, I started off with an NES uh, my dad's NES, and I started my first game. I think I remember playing was the Gold Cartridge Legend of Zelda. It's a legendary find nowadays. The other game I remember playing very early on was Mike Tyson's Punch Out. That game has uh, has an amazing soundtrack. I think uh, at one point it was my ringtone <laughs> for my for my phone. One of the songs there when he's training when he's riding the bike and they're training and going to the next fight. And so I have uh, a lot of background in video games. I, I, I'm currently a community manager for a VR company. I've done, I've been a partner for mixer partner for Facebook. I've been on Twitch. I'm on YouTube right now. Currently. And my main focus has been on YouTube, which we've actually done pretty well. We've been releasing a video every uh, Wednesday at 3 PM Eastern time. That includes all sorts of titles like indie titles, VR titles, AAA titles. I do a wide range of basically everything. As you can tell by the name of the show, Variety Games with Josh, I play everything. And I just don't I don't just play the popular games like Fortnite and Call of Duty and the boring stuff that just gets repetitive over and over again. I like to explore like indie titles, RPGs, strategy games, simulators. All sorts of things, and th and that goes on any platform. Right now, I do a lot of Xbox because Xbox has Xbox Game Pass, and that is very easy to play a whole slew of different games, and I absolutely love it. And on my YouTube channel, I have a series called Game Pass Gameplay, where we check out like the new games that are coming into to Game Pass, and and you can check it out, get a quick view of like what the gameplay is, and see if you want to download and play it for yourself. So. That's one of our series there. We also do a lot of uh, VR gaming series stuff. I do. I have a MetaQuest 3, which I do MetaQuest games, Steam VR games, any VR games that I can get my hands on because I love VR gaming. It is one of my favorite things right now. Sometimes we'll get the chance uh, in the future to visit some upcoming conventions possibly. So I've been to a number of conventions in the past with Mixer and my partnerships with the different gaming platforms. So I've been to E3, I've been to PAX East, PAX West, uh, Guardian Con, PAX South. So I've been to quite a few cons. I, I love conventions. I love going. My biggest thing going to conventions, obviously, is to play all the different games, to try out all the new stuff, and to get the goodies. <laughs> I love the goodies. Uh, my favorite gift from... One of the convention parties was actually from Layers of Fear 2. It was made by the developer's Gun, which also made Te Texas Chainsaw Massacre. They made Friday the 13th. They're wonderful developers, and they're, they're a great team. They're super nice people. And the gift that they gave us at their party for Layers of Fear 2 was, it was like a whiskey glass, and it had laser etched the Layers of Fear logo on it. And that is something that I still hold dear to this day because I think that is probably one of the greatest gifts I've ever gotten from one of those parties. So, so yeah, so that's that's me. Um, I went a little bit extra into to all sorts of things, but we, yeah, we're going to talk about a whole slew of things on this on this podcast, and I really am excited to see where this goes because I just love talking about video games and I love um, sharing that with other people. And I know I'm going to find some people out there that have the same likes as me and we can all just be a community and, and talk about it together each, each episode here. So let's get into it. But first 
I just want to shout out, like, uh, if you want to check out my YouTube, Twitch, and other social platforms. My name is Josh. I go by Lone Wolf Josh TV on YouTube, Twitch, X, all that stuff. You can also find all these links at LoneWolfJosh.com. Um, you can check out the stream. I don't stream as often as I used to. I do put up a lot of YouTube videos now. So make sure you check it out. We got a lot of interesting videos on there, like I said. So hit the subscribe button on there. Hit the follow button on this platform that you're listening to right now. And hopefully we can continue sharing all sorts of variety of video games together. So so kicking off this first episode, I wanted to talk about um, some games that I've played on the channel recently. Um, we're starting with Star Trucker. Uh, this is a game that I found <laughs> that I found on TikTok actually. Which shout out TikTok, you actually can find a lot of really cool upcoming games, indie games, and all sorts of stuff. Make sure you're searching the hashtag like indie games or just go into the search bar and search for like genres you like or things like that because you can actually find a lot of really like solid games i found quite a few games that i really enjoy and this is one of them star trucker i actually real quick i if you're if you're going to do that on on tiktok i suggest like starting a collection um what i did was i i if you go on on tiktok you open the platform up and then you just search a video. If you click a video, uh, the little bookmark at the bottom right, you can start a favorites, and then you can create a new collection. So if you hit the top button where it has a plus where it says create new collection, you can name it whatever you want. You can sort whatever videos you want. You know, So go, go into the TikTok search. There's a ton of stuff on there because a lot of the developers nowadays use tiktok as a ways of marketing so search those hashtags search the rpgs that you like search the simulators you you like so you'll find stuff like this indie games is a good one hashtag indie games is a really good one or um cozy games is one of my favorites too i love playing cozy games man just i love cozy games when you create that collection you can always go back and and look it up on steam or whatever platform you're using and and check out those games see how much they are give them a shot and support the developers because you know we have a lot of like smaller teams out there that are really trying to pour everything they have into these games that they make and they're very passionate about it and we got to support those teams so make sure you're doing your your research and get out of the like the the, the whole popular triple a flow i know that there's some games that you're going to be playing and trying and stuff that are AAA games, and I'm not saying don't play AAA games, but I'm saying expand a little bit. Try out indie games because they will surprise you. And we're about to talk about uh, a couple of them right here. They they really are. You can really feel the passion that's put into a project like this. Some of these games that we're about to talk about. So, first of all, going back to the point that we were about to jump on was star trucker so this star trucker is basically like a exactly what it says it, it's a it's a trucking sim but you're in space so if you're familiar with like american truck simulator or euro truck simulator star trucker you take cargo from certain points in the in the galaxy and then you have to you know use jump gates you you have different physics and things in space obviously you're gonna be drifting a lot which i did and if you want to check out the video it's on my youtube which is actually pretty funny because I, I when i first start off i kind of hit a few things here and there um a little little bumps here and there and <laughs> you know you get you get docked a little bit of pay for being a careless driver but um it's a, it's, it's a great game that I really like. And I found out uh, actually just before it launched that it came out on Game Pass. So you can play it if you have Game Pass console or PC, or if you have the Ultimate, you can play it um, right now on Game Pass. It, it, it's available. So that's what I did. I played it day one with, with uh, Game Pass. Um, the developer's Monster and Monster, and there's a, the, the publisher is Raw Fury. Uh, you can check them out on, on X or whichever platform, social media platform they are on. The description here for the game is you haul cargo 
trade salvage, and keep your spacesuit close as you search for fame and fortune among the stars in the game. That puts an interstellar twist on a truck sim genre, which is actually really creative, and I loved it. I was scrolling through TikTok looking for other games to put in my collection for new games to try. That's my collection, is new games to try. And found this, and I was like... I think at first they had mentioned that it was a uh, single player and I was fine with that um, because the graphics and things, it just looks so cool. And I, for one loved uh, American truck simulator. I played a ton of American truck simulator. I love like the, the games that you can just kind of kick back and relax. Sometimes, you know, sometimes you want to get into some action, some shooting and blasting and stuff, but then you also have those moments where you just want need to like disconnect and just kind of and just kind of relax and and chill. And Star Trucker is one of those games I felt like it does have uh, some storyline to it. There there is some like you have a CB radio that you can grab up and pull down and and talk to the people that are on the radio. And that kind of sets up some some missions and things for you. Kind of guides you when you're first learning the game. But mainly, you can just pick up jobs. You can progress your skills. You have just-in-time deliveries. You have fragile deliveries. There's, there's all sorts of things on the skill tree that you can expand to. And I think, for me, I when I first recorded the video, I did kind of like the normal mode, which is, which is like right in the middle where you have to maintain like your systems of your truck, which is also a very interesting concept that you have to maintain the gravity and the oxygen and things like that. So you can set it really however you want. When I first played, it was right in the middle where I had to uh, change the battery on some systems. I had to repair things on the outside of the hull because it took a little bit of damage from me bumping things. So the repairing the hull is pretty interesting. Uh, after I made that video, uh, someone had commented that they just put it on driver or they customized the settings to where the systems that you need to repair aren't as crazy because sometimes it can feel like, you know, the gravity or the oxygen is draining a little too fast. And if you just want a nice chill experience, you can just hit driver and they'll still drain, but they won't drain nearly as quickly as the other options. So if you want to like a more relaxed experience, I totally recommend you try the driver out because that is something that, uh, yeah, after I played it the first time, I was like, I'm just going to try and switch it to driver and see how it feels. And it, it was definitely the way to go for me personally, because I just, like I said, I like kicking back, relaxing and, and, just playing the game um, like it's America Truck Simulator where you just pick up cargo, you take it to another point. In this game, you go to these jump gates where you can activate the jump gate and there's <laughs> there's there's searches, which I found pretty funny. Um, there's one mission when you start, you take a questionable load or cargo and uh, once you get past the jump gate, once you leave a jump gate, like you get to the new area, there's these little police guys that, that drop down and check out your cargo and then they start talking to you on the radio. So I thought that was really cool. And there's, there's so much aspects to this, this game that I really enjoy and I'll probably keep going back to it. The replayability on this is, is super high. As, as you probably, have, if you've played American Truck Simulator or Euro Truck Simulator, you know that it's a game that you just can keep coming back to. And I think the big thing for this, and I'm not going to put this game down in any way. I'm just going to say if they added multiplayer, then this game would probably be perfect. Like it would be so much fun multiplayer. But again, I don't want you to, to think like without multiplayer, it's a bad game because I had a lot of fun with it, repairing my ship, changing the systems, you know, talking on the CB radio, getting different jobs, you know, fueling up my truck, things like that. I just think that the multiplayer would add another level of, of just, uh, of the experience in general. Like I was thinking about 
if you had your own your your own crew basically and you were going on you know convoys and things across the galaxy it would be pretty cool like like just kind of like american truck sim where you have you know your shipping company and you guys team up there's multiplayer servers and stuff you can set up a server for ATS. I would love something like that for Star Trucker. And, you know, with any with any game, they're going to be looking to expand. And I think multiplayer just makes the most sense. Because imagine the CB radio. <laughs> imagine going on the CB radio and saying, Tag 4, good buddy, Tag 4. You know, just going talking back and forth with the with the CB radio would be would be pretty hilarious. And I think it would work out really well for the game. Make sure you check out Star Trucker. Like I said, it's on Game Pass. You can check it out right now if you have console, PC, or Ultimate Game Pass. It is also on Steam. You can just get it on on PC on Steam. I totally recommend it. It's a great game, and uh, it's not too ridiculously priced. So make sure you check it out for yourself if that's something that you enjoy. The 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 driving and and the space. It's once you get used to the flying in, in space and star trucker it's not bad it, it it doesn't take you very long to get used to the controls and, and the drift of space but at first you're gonna have some difficulty you that you're gonna have a little bit of difficulty that's just what it comes down to so as soon as you get uh, the feel of everything it becomes very relaxing and you can just be like you know flipping around and hooking up those cargoes and dropping them off, no problem. Check out Star Trucker on Game Pass on Xbox and on Steam. Moving on, uh, the next, this this topic uh, is, is definitely one that I've been looking forward to talking about. I'm a huge fan of simulators. Love simulator games. They're, they're, they're one of my favorite genres. They are one of my favorite genres. I love simulator games. And recently, there's been two tavern games manager simulators to come out and i was first informed about the uh, the tavern manager simulator which that's the title and again you can go check these out these gameplay videos out on my youtube um youtube.com slash lone wolf josh tv i have tavern manager simulator and i also now have multiplayer gameplay of ale and tail tavern which i did with with my father daddy o and uh, our friend Earwax Candy, which is a hilarious, hilarious video. Make sure you go check that out on YouTube because we've had so much fun with that, with making that video. And I had a fun with both of these games. I never knew I needed a Tavern Manager Simulator game, but good Lord, they are fun if you enjoy simulator games. Both of them have their own kind of style. They are similar in a lot of ways. There are a few things that Tavern Manager Simulator does that Ale and Tail doesn't do or Ale and Tail does that Tavern Manager Simulator does. I would say both of them are super fun. Tavern Manager Simulator is developed by One More Time. It's more of a sing- single player experience and it gives you more of like kind of a I don't want to say completely relaxing experience, but it's the focus is obviously all on you. And I feel like in Tavern Manager Simulator, it was more interactive, if that makes any sense. Like when you go fill up an, a mug of ale, there's a little mini game to fill that little mug of ale. Or if you go to cook something or you you go wash the dishes. So it's there's there's a lot more interactivity in the game in Tavern Manager Simulator than there was Ale and Tale. And this might change in the future. Because both of these teams are still actively developing these games. And they just recently came out, the both of them. So the one thing that I really liked about Tavern Manager Simulator was like the resource management. You have a little office that you go over into the office and you have to like order, you know, your your big barrels of ale or, you know, your food, things like that. And it comes (laughs) it comes out back via cart so you have to run out back you have to collect your stuff from the cart and you have to put it on the shelf in the warehouse and then that allows you to put it forward into the tavern so that people can buy it so it it's a very i think that's 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 the way to go because it makes it a little bit more of of a immersive experience when you're running out back 
and I, <laughs> I can't remember what it's called. I think I was calling the guy Gary. He was out back and I was calling him Gary or something. Hey Gary, thanks. Thanks for the drop off Gary. And, uh, it, yeah, it was a fun experience. So you definitely check that video out, the Tavern Manager Simulator out. Ale and Tail Tavern is developed by Art Games, and hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. The game is multiplayer up to four players, and it has, to me, it has like a little bit of a overcooked vibe to it. Like there's a lot of chaos going on, but I feel like in the same way like overcooked is, you kind of delegate jobs to to the people that are playing the game which is not bad it, it keeps things organized so for me i was basically the chef which we were joking about in the the gameplay and yeah <laughs> you'll see i was uh i was i was cooking everything basically i was prepping everything so that daddio and earwax could to serve it and then earwax would go out on the side quest missions and things. Um, there were certain points of the game where I felt like I was literally in the bear, the TV show. At one point, earwax shouted "Yes, chef!" at me because I was getting a little bit too too much, <laughs> which was funny. Um, but at certain points in the game, you feel like you have to rotate your menu. Uh, because if you look at the menu and the things that you put out to, to sell, it'll, the experience will go down. The, the money will go down if you sell too much of it. So if you get comfortable on selling one thing, it drops the experience so low that you can't progress. So it's almost like you have to put other things on the menu. You have to evolve your tavern or else you won't gain levels you won't get new recipes things like that which i thought that was really interesting because it keeps you on your toes switching up your your menu on there um, learning the different recipes there's so much to ale and tail in the ways of building your own menu and deciding what things you want on your menu and like the recipes you can make you have a, a garden outside that you can grow your vegetables and things you also have like a little pad for animals where you can have chickens and pigs and other things. Um, there, there was one point where we got chickens and had so many chickens like reproducing that we had tons of eggs in this pen. And we had so many <laughs> boiled egg recipes to send out to customers that I couldn't really keep up with the eggs. So sometimes you gotta, you gotta make some grilled chicken every while, once in a while. <laughs> so, but it was a great game. Ale and Tail Tavern is a little bit more in depth, I feel, but both games are really, really fun to play. Ale and Tail also has enemies invade your tavern. It has these zombies run in and attack you sometimes to throw you off your game, or there'll be enemies um, in the land outside when you're doing quests and things you're looking for certain things so there is a quest line for ale and tail that takes you outside the tavern to um discover different mushrooms or different uh items outside the tavern which is which is really cool so again i don't want to put down either game because both games were super fun i felt like i didn't get as far in Tavern Manager Simulator as I did with Ale and Tail Tavern because Earwax Daddy and I streamed Ale and Tail Tavern and we were on there for quite a bit. Uh, we even off stream played it <laughs> even further because there's just something about you know multiplayer games when you get your friends together and the chaos of the tavern just turns into funny scenarios and it's just. There's so many things that you gotta manage and you gotta you gotta help out front with the customers and sometimes you gotta shoo the customers off because they're too drunk, you know, things like that. The the both of the tavern manager simulated tavern manager and ale and tail tavern are both tremendous games. And again, you can find those on Steam. They're not very expensive. Um Ale and Tail Tavern, I believe, was $14.99, so it was a very, very good good game to play with friends like a really fun game to play with friends that's not very expensive and like we talked about with the the indie games is they 
obviously are looking to make some profit on their games. Obviously that's, that's, I can't, you can't say that indie developers are not looking for any kind of profit. I mean, there are some indie developers that do just want to throw their games out there to, for you to have fun with, but we do need to support the developers like this because they make very fun experiences. And the thing is you don't need, you don't need the like ridiculously realistic graphics in my opinion to make a great game you can have your own style of art you can have these mechanics that just feel good that the depth of the game is is vast so that you can just keep playing it over and over and over again and have different things and it, it's it's something that indie devs do great at because they pour everything they got into a project and it comes out especially with these games that i that i was talking about it comes out with you feeling that way like you're fulfilled because in most cases i won't say all cases but in most cases you feel fulfilled because you know that that team is probably a smaller team you know they're probably working their asses off and they're putting out a game for $14.99 or $20. Bucks, and it's a game that's better than a lot of these AAA games that are coming out. A, a lot better. So, again, like I'm saying, expand your games. Expand your mind and jump into the world of indie games. Because, man, they are so, so much fun. Which leads me kind of into the next topic of the show. And I wanted to bring this up because I feel like there's a narrative out there that that has gotten worse lately. And I feel like there's too often that there's a certain number of people out there that are far too quick to judge a new game or they feel like it's popular or clickbaity to bash a game right off the bat without really seeing any gameplay or touching it themselves or they jump on the train to just bash video games even though there's a lot of great gameplay in in some of them and like don't get me wrong there are some games that that um do feel just like a cash grab with AAA devs mainly but i think we need to reserve judgment until you play the game yourself. There's a lot of big YouTubers, streamers, creators out there. They really know that they're going to get clicks based on if they just bash a game. Like, and people are expecting them to do it. Like, they're ex almost expecting them to bash a game right as soon as it comes out there's there's a lot of games out there recently that i that i didn't agree with people being toxic about like i and unfortunately i put out a game pass gameplay video on my youtube it was for flintlock the siege of dawn and um there's been a lot of controversy of sweet baby ink and and the quote wokeness and things and i don't i don't want to get political for this stuff i want to make sure that we're just non-biased non-partisan we're all gamers here and flintlock that video got so many down votes when all i was doing was just showing the gameplay and the gameplay in my opinion wasn't bad I thought it was very good. I thought it was fun. The story was interesting. So I, uh, again, I I was under fire on that one video. And it's un unfortunately, it's one of my most watched videos. Or fortunately, maybe. Fortunately, it's one of my most watched videos. I don't know however you want to look at that. Because it's one of it's my most downvoted video because of the Sweet Baby Ink stuff. So it, it it's that... Um, I could name a, co a couple other games too. Like people did this with like Gotham Knights and I, I ended up playing that and I thought it was super fun not to get too far off topic, but I thought that if you took it away, like if you didn't think of it as an Arkham game, then a standalone like Gotham Knights game 
then you really do have fun with it. It's it's really enjoyable, and and I think at one point it's on game. It was on Game Pass. I'm I'm pretty sure it's still on Game Pass right now. Um, but that was one game that got really bashed and it got really disliked, and I think it didn't deserve all the hate that it had. One of the the biggest ones for me now, and this is kind of like a fifty fifty because. Lately, Warner Brothers Games has made some really bad decisions. Really bad decisions. The prices of the games, the prices of these battle passes, and prices of these cosmetics are just going up and up and up and up and up. And WB Games does a really bad job at maintaining that stuff. And you look at some of the other games that are like, you know, Helldivers or, you know, Space Marine 2 now, and or you know, other games that have gotten it right, where it's not like the game has is ridiculously expensive. It just has the one battle pass, which you can earn with in-game credits and stuff. It's just you have to spend a little bit more time grinding to get that. WB Games, it seems like they focused, and, and it's the same for, like, uh, same for Ubisoft. Ubisoft has been doing this a lot lately, where they have been jacking up the price of video games and they throw all these battle passes and cosmetics that are super expensive and things and it's just horribly mismanaged and then that relate that that i can understand if gamers are being too toxic about that kind of stuff or i shouldn't say toxic it's something that's justified because when companies like that their only focus is to make as much money as possible regardless of if it hurts the game or not. That's a problem. And I think we should definitely call that stuff out. Which which WB Games and, U, and Ubisoft have been doing that lately. I don't understand it. It, do, it doesn't make any sense to me why you would continue jacking up the price and then you would offer a DLC at launch. That's something that I don't understand either. Like, when you're talking about DLC, you're talking about downloadable content that you know maybe three months after the game comes out there's just some more missions and stuff like that you don't you don't launch dlc right at launch that just means you're leaving out parts of the game to be paid for which it's different if you had more content three or six months later that you just wanted to put out because people are enjoying the game so much that there's a difference there. So I can understand where players and gamers will have frustration because of those decisions, but there are some times, a lot of times lately that people put down games just to put down games because everybody else is doing it. And on this channel specifically and the YouTube and anything I play, Yes, I will have my own opinions, right? But I try not to bash the games that I play. If something is just not my style, I just won't play it. I'll, I'll look at some of the the art, the, the trailers and things like that, and I, I admit some games just aren't me. I just don't, there's some games that I don't like playing, right? And that's the same for, for any of you. You, it's okay to not like certain genres of games or certain types of games. It's okay. You don't have to play them, you know, but to go out there and bash a video game just because other people are bashing it, that's, that's a problem. And it's it's very much like a sheep mentality. Like you're just falling in line with these bigger creators that are telling you to hate this or like that. You know, in some cases that might be because they're promoting something or, you know, they're they're trying to sell you something, or, you know, th things like that. So don't get mixed up in that. I would stress that, like I've been saying throughout this this podcast episode, get out there and try different companies, different games. There's, there's all sorts of cozy games out there, indie games. Like you can find your perfect genre of game. If you just go out and explore, just go on steam, you know, go on whatever social platform you want and search some hashtags and start, you know, 
looking for accounts that highlight the games that you're into, like cozy games or simulators, RPGs, racing games, sports games, things like that, because you don't have to just settle for the games that get a lot of publicity and marketing and stuff like that. A lot of these times, these indie devs don't really have a marketing budget, so they're left to just put things out on these free platforms and things like that. You know, TikTok, YouTube, X, Facebook. There's a whole bunch of Facebook groups that you can search for like indie games and that that'll have developers in there and stuff that are looking for testers and join discords and things. There's all sorts of groups that you can find the games that you're looking for. And then I would even go a step further and say, if you really enjoy that game, participate because the developers are looking for help to improve their game. They want other people to play it. And if you have any bugs that you find, go and report them, go in discord, go on their website. There's gotta be a bug, you know, report system on these platforms that you can use. You can also suggest features, you know, don't be a jerk about it and say, you know, be, be aggressive, but just mention that, Hey, I think this might make things a little easier, or I think this might be a good addition because of this, this, and this explain it, have a conversation with them because those kinds of devs, the indie devs, the smaller teams are really working hard and working with their communities better than any other triple game, triple a games that have millions or thousands and hundreds of thousands of fans that you might feel like you're drowned out and you, you you don't get a word across. Those indie developers will listen to you. They'll respond to you. They'll get back to you. They'll they'll let you know how things are going. And you just have to build that relationship with that game, with that team. So when you find games like that, shout them out on, on any social platform that you have. Hey, I played this game and I really love it. Here's the link to it. Here's the developers that made it. And it creates a pattern of promoting, you know, good games. And when we do that, we can push aside those those AAA developers that are trying to take advantage of people's pocketbooks <laughs> and give the rewards to a team that is building a passion project that really cares about their community and doesn't sell it for that much, you know? That's what I hope that we could turn this stuff into. And hopefully with this podcast, we can discuss all sorts of video games that that you might be interested in or you find on this podcast and be like, hey, Josh, I gave that a shot and I really loved it. Thank you for suggesting that I put it out on my on my ex account or I told my my friends about it and we all got jumped into it. We're in the discord now, you know. Let's build a better gaming community where we can help those smaller teams and promote them in ways that they might not be able to do with, with the little budget that they have. So I think that's the lesson of the day. Don't become one of those toxic sheep. Turn it into useful actions that you can take for developers that you feel need an extra push right? So take those indie developers, take those smaller devs, those games that you really love and promote them as much as you can on any social platform. So take what could have been toxic and turn it into positive action with indie developers and, and smaller games and smaller dev teams. Let's turn that around because I'm getting, and I know you probably are too, if you're listening to this podcast the whole way through, we're getting tired of constant negativity. So instead, let's be a force of good change out there instead of joining the toxic crowd because that's the better way to do things. Thank you for tuning in to the very first episode of Variety Video Games with Josh. Remember to subscribe, hit the follow button on whatever platform you listen to, hit the heart, share with friends, things like that. Hit all those buttons. If you'd like to find my gameplay videos, just go on YouTube or Twitch. Mainly I'm on YouTube now, so go to youtube.com slash TV. And hey, I really appreciate you spending your time listening to this podcast, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace!